In this video, we will discuss about the mathematics behind the calculation of leap years. Both the history and mathematics behind the corrections of our calendar is very interesting. Although we will concentrate mainly on the mathematics behind leap year calculation, we will also recall the historical events that led us to these corrections. The calendar that you are seeing on the screen is the actual calendar of the United Kingdom for September 1752. It is a milestone in the history of Gregorian calendar. The days 3 to 13 are missing in this calendar. We have September 14th, just after September 2nd. That is, the month is only 19 days long. Interesting, right? The Gregorian calendar was first introduced by Pope Gregory XIII in 1582. Its predecessor was the Julian calendar. During the shifting from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, the papal bull issued by Pope Gregory XIII decreed that ten days need to be skipped. But the direction was not obeyed all over the world at the same time. Only five countries, namely Italy, Poland, Portugal, Spain and most part of France adopted the new calendar system. The rest of the world were still using the Julian calendar system. Later, most of the countries adopted the Gregorian calendar. For example, the US, the UK and Canada adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1752 by dropping 11 days. Japan adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1872 by dropping 12 days. Greece, Turkey, and Russia switched to Gregorian calendar in the early 20th century by dropping 13 days. One by one, the same thing happened in other countries also. Now the question arises, why was such bold step of removal of 10 days needed in 1582? The simple answer is, it was needed for synchronizing the calendar with astronomical seasons or events because Julian calendar was unable to sync the calendar with the astronomical seasons. Why is the Julian calendar unable to sync with the seasons? This is due to error in calculation of leap years in Julian calendar. Julian calendar takes one year as exactly 365.25 days long. In a Julian calendar, the years are divided into 365 days, 0.25 days shorter. In the fourth year, the shortages made by ignoring the 0.25 days is made good by adding one extra day. That is, every fourth year is 366 days long and are known as leap years. The calculation of leap year in Julian calendar is very simple. Here any year evenly divisible by 4 is a leap year. That is, in Julian calendar, every fourth year is a leap year. Now let's try to understand the mathematics behind the Julian calendar. In Julian calendar, one year equals 365.25 days. Here the common years are taken as 365 days long. The leap years are 366 days long. Every fourth year is a leap year, without exception. One extra day is added in February. As one year is 365.25 days. Four years should have four times 365.25 days, that is 1,461 days. In the calendars, we get 365 plus 365 plus 365 plus 366 days, that is 1,461 days altogether. The extra one day comes from the fractional portion of 0.25 day each in consecutive four years. That is how we get 1,461 days in four years. Here the logic of leap year calculation is very simple. Just divide the year by 4, if it has no remainder, it's a leap year. For example, 2004, 2008, etc. are leap years. Unfortunately, this calculation is not accurate. 
The problem arises from the fact that Julian calendar takes exactly 365.25 days for one year, which is incorrect. We have learned a lot about the Julian calendar. Now let's come to our main topic, Gregorian calendar. As you know, the Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII to eliminate or to minimize the inaccuracies of its predecessor, the Julian calendar. Now let's know, how? The Earth takes 365 days, 5 hours 48 minutes, and 56 seconds, or approximately 365.242190 days, to complete one revolution around the Sun. This is known as the tropical year, or the solar year. This is our Earth. It starts its revolution here and completes one revolution in 365.24219 days. Although the Earth moves in an elliptical path, actually, the Earth moves in an elliptical path, like this one. But for simplicity, we will show the completed path as a straight line. That is, when one year is completed, the Earth moves from here to there. This will help us to illustrate the differences between the path covered by the tropical year. Actually, this is this is the path covered by the tropical year. And we will next show the path covered by our calendar. That is, the calendar moves from here to there, and our Earth moves from here to there. So, when the Earth completes one rotation, it moves from here to there in 365.24219 days. This point is actually again the starting point. That is, this point, and this point is the same. And in the second year, the Earth moves from here to there, taking another 365.24219 days. And in the third year, the Earth moves from here to there, taking another 365.24219 days. In the fourth year, the Earth moves from here to there in another 365.24219 days. So, in four consecutive years, the Earth takes 365.24219 multiplied by 4 that is 1460.96876 days. That is the number of days covered by the Earth in four years. And this is as per the tropical years. That is, as per the movement of the Earth around the Sun. Now let's come to our calendar. At the beginning of the first year our calendar is here. We may consider this to be our starting point. And in one year our calendar moves from here to there. Suppose our calendar consists of 365 days. So this is 365 days. In the next year, the calendar moves from here to there in another 365 days. In the third year, the calendar takes another 365 days. In the fourth year, the calendar moves from here to there and suppose this is 365 days again. Now let's see the differences between the tropical path and the calendar path. The tropical year ended at this point, but the calendar ended here. A little behind the tropical year. And this difference is actually 0.24219 days. Because it is 365.24219 days, and here it is only 365 days. Here the difference is double, that 2 times 0.24219 days. In the third year, the gap is much more, that is 3 times 0.24219 days. And in the fourth year, the gap is the most, it is 4 times 0.24219 days. Or 0.96876 days. If round this number, it is almost one day. So, in the Julian calendar, the fourth year is not completed in 365 days, 
one additional day is added in the fourth year to make good the difference as shown just before. And this makes the calendar 366 days long in the fourth year. So, the end of the calendar year is shifted to this point. To sync the calendar with the position of the Earth in its orbit. But in doing so we introduce an error because one day is more than 0.96876 days. So, our calendar took 365 into 4, plus 1, that is, 1461 days in 4 years. So, this red portion is actually extra fractional day added in a 4-year block. This is actually 1461 minus 1460.96876, that is, 0 0.03124 day. That is, our calendar is taking 0 0.03124 days more to complete 4 years. Although the fraction seems to be very small, in hundreds of years, it will become a considerable number of days that could not be ignored. If this process continues, then one day our calendar will drift away from the position of the Earth and there will be no synchronization of the calendar with the seasons. That is, our Earth will be here, and the calendar will be here. So, there will be a drift from the position of Earth to the position of the calendar. Remember that the change of the seasons is due the position of the Earth on its orbit. So, if don't sync our calendar with the movement of the Earth, our calendar will not be able to sync the seasons with the calendar. Now you understand why we need some kind of correction to eliminate or minimize the error caused due to addition of one extra day in the fourth year. This is the reason of moving from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. The Julian calendar simply ignores the error and consider every fourth year to be leap year. The Gregorian calendar handles this issue brilliantly. Now we will see how Gregorian calendar handles leap years. We have already learned the treatment of leap years in Julian calendar. In Julian calendar, the time frame for calculation of leap year is just four years and it ignores the minor difference between the length of the tropical year and the calendar year. In this section, we will learn the arithmetic behind the calculation of leap years in Gregorian calendar. Let's consider a time frame of 400 years. We already know that the Earth revolves around the Sun in an elliptical path and takes 365.24219 days to complete one revolution. This is our tropical year, or solar year. That is, to complete one revolution, the Earth takes 365.24219 days. So, in 400 years, it takes 365.2419 into 400, that is equal to 146,096.876 days. This is as per the tropical year, or solar year. So, the number of days taken by the tropical year in a time span of 400 years is 146,096.876 days. This is the calculation for the tropical year. Now let's check it for the calendar year. For the time being consider that our calendar consists of only 365 days a year and there is no concept of leap year in it. So, in 400 years, there are 365 into 400, that is, 146,000 days. So, the difference between these two figures 146,096.876 and 146,096 is 96.876 days, that is approximately 97 days. It reveals that, in a time frame of 400 years, our calendar is approximately 97 days shorter than the tropical year. So, we need to distribute these 97 days in various years of our calendar. This will make our calendar 146,097 days long in 400 years, which is very closer to the tropical calendar. Remember that in Julian calendar every fourth year is a leap year. 
So, in 400 years, there are 100 leap years. But, as per this calculation, there should be at most 97, not 100, leap years. That is the correction made in Gregorian calendar. That is, as per the Gregorian calendar, there should be 97 leap years in a time frame of 400 years. But in Julian calendar, it was 100 days. So, there was a drift of nearly three days from the tropical year. But this, too, is not 100% correct either. Here the error is just 0.124 day in a time span of 400 years, which we may ignore for now. And that is the basis of leap year calculation in the Gregorian calendar. Now we will see how these 97 days are adjusted in the calendar in a time span of 400 years. Leap year calculation in Gregorian calendar. If the year is divisible by 4, and if the year is not divisible by 100, then it's a leap year. Or, if the year is exactly divisible by 400, then it's a leap year. That is, any one of the two conditions must be true for a year to be a leap year. That is, in Gregorian calendar, not all the century years are leap years. Only the century years that are multiples of 400 are considered leap years. In this way, in a range of 400 years, three leap years are eliminated in Gregorian calendar. Brilliant, isn't it? Mathematically, we may write the logic in the following ways also. Here mod stands for modular division, and it gives the remainder of the division. Hope that you have understood the logic behind the leap year calculation in Gregorian calendar. If you like the video, please like it and share it with others. And don't forget to subscribe the channel for more such useful videos. Thanks for watching.